Hi guys, Ross here and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be talking about improving your texturing in Cinema 4D and Redshift. So we're actually going to be taking an asset from Forrester. It is a plugin for Cinema 4D where you can create trees, grass, foliage, and we're going to take one of the flower assets and just really focus on improving the texturing for that. So we're going to go over some topics such as subsurface scattering, displacement, and also just a bunch of other Redshift nodes we can use to help improve our textures. We're also going to be going over lighting and how this obviously plays a massive role in improving the look and feel of our renders. So this video is going to be packed full of lots of useful tips and tricks and techniques. This is an extract from Patreon so if you want to watch the whole process from start to finish where we go over more lighting and more texturing and more techniques then you can check that out over there. So thank you for watching and I will catch you on the flip side. Enjoy! First of all, let's add a redshift object tag. And we do this so that we can enable tessellation, which will smooth our object out. And also we want to enable displacement because we may need that in the future. Let's start off with using this new power of displacement to add some variation to our petals. So let's go to our petal texture and by default, they're going to come in as standard material. So obviously we want to convert these. Now it's a bit of a two-step process. So let's convert and replace all materials. That should convert them all to the old Redshift materials. So if I double click, they'll turn up in the old shader graph. So let's now go to Redshift materials and convert and replace all material with nodes. And the reason why we have to do it like that is because if you try to convert it to the new node materials, it just doesn't seem to work. So you have to convert it to the old type of Redshift material and then convert it to the new one. Now you'll also notice everything's gone grayscale. This seems to be some sort of weird linking issue when you convert them. So all you need to do is just drag and replace them. So if I go to the petal texture, for example, here, and I select it on the object, and I just drag and drop it on top of the same material again, it should then relink everything. I don't know why it does that, but it does. But yeah, it's pretty easy to solve. So let's go to our petal material, and straight away, let's try to introduce some displacement to the petals to kind of break them up. So we could do it with the texture. I could create a ramp node by double clicking to bring up the menu, typing in ramp and plugging this into that. And by default, it's gonna clamp the texture quite a lot. So let's change the interpolation to linear. And then let's run this through a displacement, plug that into the texture map and then plug that into the displacement. Let's unsolo that node and straight away, it's going to give you something, but it's not looking too good. So let's scrap that idea. And instead, what we'll do is we will get a Maxon noise. And I actually prefer to do this anyway, because you have a bit more control. I like to keep things as procedural as possible. So if that means I can do it with a noise, then I will. Now, the problem we have at the moment is if I was to set the overall scale to 0.1 and for example, I wanted to elongate the noise on each of these petals, I would usually increase the Y axis. Let's have a look. It's just going to do it kind of like in world space or like across the object, which means it's just going to scale it from like bottom to top, which obviously doesn't look right when some of these petals are oriented differently. So what you need to do is change the source to UV slash vertex attribute. And luckily for us, Forrester does come with these objects already UV unwrapped, which means now we can have that Maxon noise mapped out properly across each of the petals. So let's put the overall scale back to one and maybe drop the scale on the Y axis to something like five. Maybe we could put the overall scale to five as well and drop that back down to like three. And now we've got kind of proper mapping across all these petals. Let's also change the noise type to something like turbulence, which is just going to give us a bit more detail. Maybe we can increase the scale on the X axis and then maybe decrease the overall scale and maybe then increase the scale on the Y axis. So it's stretched out a bit more. So now we get something like this. So if I was to plug this into the displacement, unsolo that node, and now you can see we're getting some variation. Obviously this is a bit too intense. So let's maybe drop the scale down to 0.2 on the displacement. And straight away, you're starting to see how we have some of that detail come through on our petals. Now it looks super heavy at the moment and this is partially due to the lighting, but also due to the material itself. If we look at it, you can see we got no translucency. We have no reflection. There isn't really much going on. So what I'd actually do is I would actually delete this material because I want to use the new standard material. So I'm going to double click to bring up the menu, type in standard material. 
and let's just output this to the surface. Let's just scrap that material node and we'll leave that diffuse there for now. So I'm going to actually disable the base. We'll leave reflection on for now, that's okay. Um, let's go to subsurface and I like to use the subsurface for these petals because it gives you that nice translucent look because we don't have translucency in the standard material unless you enable thin walled and then that basically makes the subsurface act as translucency. But I'm going to leave it unticked for now and let's just play with this. So I can actually input that yellow color into the subsurface color. So let's set that to maybe like 30, 90% saturation. And you can see that yellow color comes back through. Maybe we set it to 40 on the hue. And then let's go to the radius and let's set a similar color in, but let's maybe make this a bit warmer. So maybe this is like 25. Again, let's maybe make it like 90%. And now they feel a lot lighter. We're getting that displacement still come through the petals, but because it is purely subsurface, it's smoothing out all the petals. Everything feels a bit lighter. It feels a bit more natural and it just looks worlds apart already. What I'd actually be tempted to do is I might take a screenshot quickly just with the old material, just because I want to, I always like to compare the before and after. So let's quickly just run that back in and let's take a screenshot. Boom. Take a screenshot with the original one. Let's plug the new material in. Delete that. Took a screenshot by accident. There we go. Okay, cool. So we've got the standard material in. The next thing I'll do is play with the reflection. And obviously the lighting isn't great at the moment because if I disable subsurface, you can see we're actually getting the reflection only catch on the left. So let's refine the lighting a little bit. And that is going to be kind of part of making this look right is getting your lighting right because you could have the best textures in the world. But if your lighting doesn't look good, then uh, neither will your texturing. So let's try set this up to look a bit better. And let's put this to clay for now, just so I can actually see what's going on. And I want to create that harsh lighting I created in the original. So let's turn down the spread on our light to 0.1 and decrease the width so that we get this kind of nice fade towards the top and bottom of our flower. And because we are using subsurface, we can get away with lighting it from behind. So let's do that. And let's also light it from more of kind of a harsher angle, which means we're going to see more of the detail on our displacement as well. So let's maybe go for something like this. And let's really decrease the width on that. And maybe we need to decrease the spread even more, 0 0.05, something like that. Let's find a good angle for this something like this. And maybe we can just turn that spread up ever so slightly, 0 0.08. There we go. It's pretty good. Let's uh, go back to the regular and we're not really getting any reflection. So let's increase the height and maybe tip it over the front a bit more. Let's have a look. There we go. So now we're getting the reflection catch along the top. We could probably decrease the height. We don't need it to be that intense and we can just move it like that. Cool, that looks uh, pretty good. I think maybe we could rotate it around like that so that the light's more of an angle as opposed to going directly left to right. Cool, now we're getting that reflection. So now if I re-enable the subsurface scattering, we should get some of that reflection come through. Now, obviously this is way too intense. If I go to the clay, you can see how bright this is. So let's turn down the area light slightly and let's just reorganize some of this. There we go. So let's turn the intensity down to something like 50, maybe even 40. There we go. Cool, so nothing's gonna be too overexposed. So that looks pretty good. And now obviously this is super shiny. So let's actually turn the roughness up to like 0.35 maybe or 0.4. And then let's drop the weight down to like 0.7. So we get some of those reflections and some specular on the petals, which looks a lot better already, but it almost looks too translucent. So if we imagine the subsurface is our translucency, let's maybe change this to like 0.6. So that would drop the amount of translucency. And now we can bring the base color back in. So let's increase the weight of our base and maybe we'll set this to uh, texture. So let's plug the texture back into the material, not the surface. There we go, into the base color. And now we'll get that original color we wanted. I'm actually not really a fan of this. So what I did instead was I put it into a ramp because maybe I want to become more stylized with this. So let's plug it into a ramp. 
Let's solo this. Again, I'm going to change that to linear. Actually, I might leave it smooth because I think the contrast helps a little bit. And let's say instead of I wanted like this in a bit, which at the moment is black, say I wanted this to be like a bluish color. I could change that to like a blue. And then I could change this white to, I don't know, like a purple or something like that. So let's change that to a purple. Now we have that kind of blue to purple, plug that into the color. And now that's coming through, but obviously now that doesn't match the subsurface. So let's go down to the color of the subsurface and we'll change that to like a light blue. And then I'll change the radius to a purple. So I, I imagine like the radius color is almost like the secondary color and the subsurface color is like the main color. So you'll see like in some of the darker areas, we get these like purple tones, but the majority of the subsurface is this blue color. So now we have this lovely kind of blue purple gradient. And obviously I could change this and I could clamp these values. So maybe I could bring the blue in a bit more. So the gradient runs further out and then I could bring the purple in. So the purple becomes like a stronger purple color. And now if I unsolo that, we should see a bit more of a shift potentially. Let's disable the subsurface and see how it's looking. There we go. So we can see some of that purple there. And what we could actually do is we could go to the subsurface and we could use this same texture for the weight of the subsurface. So I could duplicate this ramp, set that to alt input, and maybe I change this to black and white. So if we imagine black as basically there being no subsurface and white as being subsurface, we can basically say in the middle, there's going to be no subsurface and on the outside. It's going to be completely activated. So let's plug this into the subsurface weight, unsolo this. And now you can see in, in the middle, it looks a lot more solid. And on the outside, we see a lot more of that translucency coming through. Obviously, I probably want there to be some translucency everywhere. So I'll change that black color to maybe like 25%. And also I'll boost that white just so that's a lot brighter now. Because before that is probably like an off-white and it's not giving us the 100% subsurface. So let's clamp that in a bit. So we get something like this. And now let's have a look. Cool. So yeah, we see the translucency on the outside and in the middle, it feels a little bit thicker. So you can use that same texture to kind of play with the weight of the subsurface, which I think looks a lot better already. The next thing we could do is we could change the color of the reflection. So maybe we want this to be slightly tinted blue to help blend in with the petals, which I think will look a bit nicer. The other thing you could do is you could add some sheen to this. So we could enable that. And that's almost like a secondary reflection which you use a lot with fabrics, but I found when I was playing with this, it helped to just lift some of the darker areas and add like a secondary reflection, as I said. So you could enable that and play with that. If I change that to red, you can kind of see the areas it's affecting. So it's kind of on the angles, which are a bit more perpendicular, I think. So you can see it's adding those secondary like red reflections. So I could change this to like purple, for example. And now we get some like shades of purple in there. So it's like a Quite a small detail, but it's uh, it's quite nice. So that's looking pretty good for the petals. We could actually change the outside to like a white color. So it's like purple on the inside and white on the outside. Cool. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Maybe we could turn the scale down on the subsurface so it's not as kind of subsurface scattered. Feels a bit denser, which I think is okay. That's fine. So that's the petals. So thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and packed full of lots of useful information, which you can then take into your own work and your own texturing game. Like I said at the beginning, this is an extract from Patreon. So if you want to watch a full start to finish where we go over more lighting, more texturing, and actually how to render this final image out with a bit of redshift post effects, then you can check that out over there. I hope you found this helpful and that you took something away from it. Enjoy the rest of your day, wherever you are in the world and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.